Hey, good morning, everybody. It's a blessing that God's given us to be back together this this Wednesday morning and get a dose of our uh, of the gospel and of the Word of God, the best thing that we could possibly need and the most important thing that we need to get through this life. And again, I got Brother Jared with me. As, uh, he's, uh, he's been holding this uh, series of uh, gospel meetings and lessons he's been bringing to us each night. And um, he's helping me out um, this week uh, with these studies this morning. And today we want to talk about, yesterday we talked about, we, we asked a question, uh, what does belief mean? And we talked about that. And, and, and this morning we want to talk about what, what does confession mean? Uh, you know, yesterday we looked at you know the concept of belief, and is it just kind of some mental? Is it, is it maybe kind of boiled down to make some box to check off? Okay, I believed, and so now yeah. I'm good to go. And 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 confession um, certainly they go together; uh, they're, they're connected. So is confession the same way? What when we go back to the Bible? What does it mean? Not necessarily what we confess. I think I think we can all um, uh, come to an agreement, have no issue of what the confession is, mm -hmm. but what does it mean when I make that confession yeah. that Jesus Christ is, is the Son of God? I think we all believe that that's the confession, but what does it mean when I make this confession that Jesus is the Christ? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. big deal. It is a bit, very big deal. There's got to be some understanding mm -hmm. and some conviction um, uh, behind that. You know, one of the probably the most popular verses is probably Romans 10, um, 9 and 10. Um, and one thing that folks have got to remember is, is Paul's audience here. Mm -hmm. Is this isn't an account of how to be saved. Is that he's talking to people that's already saved. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and a lot of times that people make that disconnect. It's mm -hmm. like, well, it's in the New Testament. It's in the epistles. So here, here's, here's that blueprint. Mm -hmm. Um, of, of how to be saved. Well, it, it may tie in with other, it may complement other passages we can find in the book of Acts, but it's it's not going to contradict no, no. Uh, what, what, what others have said. For and, and Paul says here in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. saved. I pretty good. I read pretty good. If you just mm -hmm. take it mm -hmm. and walk away from it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. That next verse kind of shows you. It's another one of these examples, which I don't want to get too far off the subject, but one of those examples where, if you read the next verse, it explains a lot of what what you wanted done anyway, mm -hmm. uh, what, what the true meaning is. And so confession is made unto salvation, uh, looking toward that salvation. And mm -hmm. so it's not just making a confession that says, I believe Jesus, and so then you're saved is because you said those words. But confession is necessary to bring you to the point of salvation for sure. Now, I'd suggest confession is also important for the Christian to continue yep. in, that, in, in that because yep. that's what... Uh, makes that possible. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 will talk about the folks who, uh, he says, in their words, uh, they were confessing, but he, in works, mm -hmm. in the works, he said they deny him. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that happens, and you might say the right thing, you might you know, talk a good game, but you're not doing it. The works deny Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem right there. Right. What is confession is so deep uh, really, uh, it, it was something, and, and again, it's something I think, at least in Western uh, culture and Western hemisphere, perhaps we don't take as seriously as some others do, and certainly not as seriously as they did in the first century. Mm -hmm. Whenever Peter uh, made that confession in Rome, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Romans, in Matthew 16, verse 18, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, in verse 16, sorry, Matthew 16, 16, and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's confessing Christ, the Son of the living God, calling him the Son of God. Mm -hmm. When he made that confession, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. He was going to, he was taking and risking his position uh, culturally, socially, 
as a Jew in that society mm -hmm. because they'd already said, if you confess Jesus as the Son of God, we're going to kick you out of the synagogue. To kick somebody out of the synagogue in those days was uh, a fate worse than death. I mean, it was right up there, in, in their minds, it was right up there with, with not being buried in the family cemetery. Mm -hmm. We're going to consider you as a non-entity, a non-person. You are no longer considered a Jew. You're no longer considered one of us. John chapter 9 records a man that that happened to, mm -hmm. that former blind man, and that's what they did to him because he confessed Christ. The only thing I can do is confess Christ, and they said, fine, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Well, in Matthew... 16, 8, I'm sorry, 16, 16, G, Peter is making that confession and taking that kind of risk. See, people died for saying Jesus is the Son of God. Back in the, in the days of Revelation, there with those folks, and, and they had uh, uh, people who died, and he talks about uh, Antipas, my faithful martyr, and so mm -hmm. forth. They were dying over that. They were supposed to take a, a pinch of, of incense and and burn that incense and say Caesar is Lord. Now if you don't say Caesar is Lord, we kill you. And these people come up and say, well, Christ is Lord. It's not Caesar, Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, uh, you, you look into that and the actual Latin spelling, even the spelling is like one letter difference. Uh, it's, it's not the same in English, but in, the, in that Roman or Latin writing there's like one letter difference between Caesar is Lord and Christ is Lord mm. it was that close and so you can see how it would be very persuasive for somebody to say hey man come on it's just one letter you yeah. know come on it's just but it made such a difference mm -hmm. whenever somebody confesses Christ it's it's a big deal and I don't want to take your show away no, from no you one. but but I'm just uh, this this is one that's uh in the book of Romans chapter one it says that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection. Mm -hmm. In Romans 1 and verse 4. And that's, that's what this means. Uh, George, what would you think of me if I, if I told you that on the way over here this morning, I stopped and got gas, and uh, I was over here uh, getting gas, and, and I saw Elvis at the gas station. And uh, he was there, and... Uh, I was wanting to buy, you know, get my gas. Well, Elvis was there. Of course, he's real generous. And so then he bought my gas and, and bought his gas. And everybody that was there, he bought the gas for them that day. Hmm. What would you think of me if I said I saw Elvis at the gas station? Well, I'd want to know what was in your coffee. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think something was wrong with that, maybe? Uh, yeah. Why would you think something's wrong with that? Just because I said Elvis was at the gas station. Yeah. Elvis has been dead for decades, ain't he? Elvis has been dead. Now, what that confession, you're saying, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He says in Romans 1 verse 4, he's declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection. Mm -hmm. What you're saying when you confess, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God like the eunuch did in Acts chapter 8 mm -hmm. verse 37. Mm -hmm. You're saying that I believe for somebody who is alive on this earth, that he died, but that he is alive right now. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Now, if I tell you I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, what do you think? You think something's in my coffee now? I don't think so. Okay. But we have proof. Yeah? What's, yeah. yeah. What's the difference? Uh, I, I've asked this question before in Bible class with, with um, you know, well, obviously a room full of people. Mm -hmm. And I've said that. I told him one time, I said, I saw John Wayne. And uh, everybody laughed. And so then I went and I said, but I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And it was still and quiet. And I said, why is it that I told you I saw John Wayne and you thought that was funny, but I tell you I believe in Jesus, you didn't think that was funny. Mm hmm. Hmm. What's the difference? Resurrection. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. And so when you're saying that, you're saying something that the culture of the first century the Greeks and all those folks, they didn't believe in resurrection. Resurrection is impossible. Mm -hmm. There's no way. This man is dead, whoever, it doesn't matter. This person's dead, mm -hmm. and they're not coming back. And then you said, uh, no, excuse me, I know somebody that did. And that confession, that's why I said it's a big deal and con to confess with your mouth 
But then also there's a confession of action. Mm -hmm. That is, my life needs to reflect Christ. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen, Titus 1.16, when that doesn't happen, I've got other problems too. Yeah, yeah. And go back to Romans 10, 9 and 10. I believe that's exactly what Paul's writing mm -hmm. right in the Romans here because that, that folds right back into the 6th chapter. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that continuing our actions are a continual confession now that we are uh, that if we're a child, a child of God, and it it, it goes, there's so much within in this confession. Go right along with what you just said. Uh, Paul said he was when he wrote to Timothy over there in that first letter. It's first Timothy said he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. All that's all of that is intertwined within within this confession. He was God in the flesh. Not just the Son of God, but God in the flesh. Yeah. He was God. He was fully God when he mm -hmm. when he walked upon this earth. Mm -hmm. He he was one that that did exactly what he said was happened. It goes back to the resurrection, as the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was three yeah. days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Well, he was in there three days and three nights. Yeah, exactly. Not four. Not two and a half. Mm -hmm. Exactly. As as what as what he had said, and and this confession goes more uh, than, than just that mental assent. And we see an example of that in John twelve, uh, John twelve, and in verse forty two. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Mm -hmm. A public acknowledgement, lest they should be kicked. Out of the yeah. it goes, so it goes back to the emphasis and the magnitude of what's connected to this confession of Christ. And and this, what we're talking about this morning, this is the confession that's going to save us. Yes, yes. That's what's going to save us. Uh, and that's that's been made clear as well. Confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. If you're not confessing, you do not confess, then you, there's no salvation there. That confession is the very essence of the church. Uh, we mentioned Matthew 16, 16, and, and I kept slipping uh, verse 18, but now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. When verse 18, Jesus says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father in heaven. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock. Well, what is that? Well, there's a little word play here between Peter being the little rock and the, this upon this rock is like this huge boulder thing that you're going to build off of. And so upon this rock. Well, what's the rock? Mm -hmm. That confession. Back in verse 16. Mm -hmm. What did he just say? About the Christ, the Son of the living God. Based on that, that rock, I'm going to build my church on that foundational truth that foundational stone. So again, confession is a big deal because it's based on my uh, or my confession. Then is a part of that very foundation, mm -hmm. which built the church. And of course, the church we know is not a build a physical building. Right. It's built off of the people, built off of Christians. Mm -hmm. And when all the Christians are all saying the same thing. And all the Christians are all confessing that same belief and living that same belief. What do you got? Yeah. You've got a foundation, 1 Peter 2 5, of living stones growing stronger and stronger and uh, can last, last the uh, you know ages of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we give you some things to chew on. So there's your there's your dose of God's yeah. word this morning. So what does confession mean? Mm -hmm. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. It means an absolute lot. So, again, uh, we'd like to invite you to come and be with us tonight at 7 o'clock as Jared's going to be bringing us another lesson uh, tonight. What are you going to be talking about tonight? Well, this one's a little different. Uh, Jesus went into different people's houses. Uh, and there's records of this, how he went and stayed. He didn't have his own house, but he would stay with other people and stay in their house. And I just got to thinking about that one day, about having house guests and all that. And 
You know, you bring people into the house, George, and you take them around, give them the nickel tour, you know. Well, this is the bedrooms, and this is the, you know, the closets, and here and here, and, you know, and there's the kitchen, and so. And I thought, Jesus was in those people's houses, and he saw very soon. What would he see if he went into your house? And so that's what we're going to ask the question tonight. What would Jesus see if he comes into your house? What is he going to see? And we just kind of take a tour through the house through the bedrooms, through the kitchen, living room, and, and all. And uh, closets, we're going to go in the closet too. We're going to look all around, you know, and just see what, what's in, a, in the house and what Jesus might see in the house and, and make applications to ourselves from there. Sounds good to be looking forward to that. So, again, we'd love to have you. 7 o'clock tonight, 2000 uh, West State Road 56 on the way out to the Speedway, just top the hill of the... Uh, caution light of 60 and 56 so we'd love to have you tonight and lord willing we'll get back tomorrow and we'll get us another dose of god's word